Omnimovie Movie uses full-size VHS tapes, plays Hollywood movies for your own. <laughs> Retro Review is right. We are back. I know we missed last week, but I'm here again, this time with another fun guest star. I promised guest stars. We are back again with another fun guest star. My guest tonight uh, is a guy I know from Instagram. Those are usually the best guests. It's like I, like I have no prior podcast experience with them. We are Instagram friends, and then it usually winds up being the most interesting people I talk to. No pressure. This is Rudy Ruiz. He's from the Drinks in a Movie podcast hi rudy thanks for joining us hey what's up man thanks for having me hell yeah uh will you tell uh our listeners about you and, and a little about drinks in a movie podcast yeah uh, i'm from los uh well not los angeles but just outside uh los angeles uh like downtown la uh so southern california i am a cameraman editor for uh, ntd news currently but i've done like freelance cinematography stuff like that huge huge movie fan i also was bartending for like a little stint as well and i do a bunch of other stuff uh, so i started this podcast i guess several years ago now drinks in a movie where much like you guys i just talk about movies except i pair them with uh, booze so whether it be like craft beer a lot of whiskeys mezcals tequila uh, stuff like that. And then sometimes I'll have on film industry guests or brand ambassadors for spirits companies and stuff like that. Like, um, I think you guys talked about X or Pearl being on one of your favorite list of yes. movies this oh, year, yeah. if I remember correctly. We like, love I love those movies. I had Elliot Rocket, that's the cinematographer on my show. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So we did like a two part episode. So I try to get like a mix of spirits people and industry pros along with most of it just being my my friends and I. But yeah. wow. So definitely because uh, people who listen to, our, to this pod also, I think, are big X and uh, Pearl fans. So definitely do go check out uh, those episodes of Drinks in a Movie because uh, I think I'm definitely going to be checking those out this week now for sure. <laughs> yeah. And the, those okay. ones are on YouTube. I don't do every episode on YouTube. It's mostly audio, but anytime I get someone like that on, there's a YouTube video. So you Smart. can find the channel and watch it. Yeah. Yeah, man. It is. Uh, we are very inconsistent with our YouTubing on this on this pod. We're same, primarily same. an audio pod. Yeah. And I then, don't like, have time for it, man. It's hard, right? <laughs> yeah. You just don't have enough time for shit. It's like you do the social yeah. and the show and you're like, okay, yeah. at some point I have to be a person and like live my life. Yeah. Uh, so the movie that Rudy and I are going to be talking about tonight is, an, is a, it's a horror movie that has plagued me a little bit my entire life only because um, it's, a, it's a VHS cover I remember very clearly from my video store, especially in the horror section, because I think um, it's not that the it's not that the cover art is is anything I catch. It's not like curtains or something that has that amazing artwork. It's more like it stuck out to me because I was of the age where uh, I remember this movie being heavily promoted, um, like on MTV, whatever. Like I was around when it came out and then seeing those posters and then seeing the VHS covers come out and uh, and always being curious about it because um, the main star, Larry Drake, is the guy that I recognize from Darkman. He's Robert G. Durant from Darkman. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll talk more about Larry Drake as we review the movie. But I was just always struck by that. I was like, the bad guy, you know, as a kid, you know, you're like, the bad guy from Darkman is in another movie, his own movie, where he's playing another bad guy, a different kind of bad guy. And for whatever reason, that is stuck in my mind. It has taken me 30, almost 30 years to finally watch it. So, and, and I... Correct me if I'm wrong. This is the first time for you as well, right? Yeah, correct. And it's it's funny. Like our, I, I'm the same way where I remember very clearly the box cover art from like Hollywood video. Like I never went to Blockbuster. I went to Hollywood video. But yeah, from the video stores. And I think I used to stay at my grandmother's house a lot when I was younger. And she always had weird, obscure horror movies. And she likes weird like asylum style monster movies. Like oh, yeah. rip offs of Anaconda called like Python. And so, you know, I mean, it's, <laughs> right, it's, it's right. really it's really bizarre. that She, she likes that Atlantic stuff. Rim, not Pacific yeah, Rim. <laughs> yeah, yeah, stuff like that. It's really bizarre. But I'm pretty sure she like had this at some point. I never watched it. Like, thank God I chose to watch Halloween and Child's Play for the first time instead. Yes. <laughs> but um, I'm pretty sure she had it. But yeah, I never watched it until you brought it up as well. And um, 
it was interesting. <laughs> yeah, this was one of those where I, you know, I have to, a little little peek behind the curtain for our, for our listeners. It's like I have the guests laid out, and I'm like, well, what what am I going to talk to uh, Rudy about? And I was like, I started thinking, that I started to look through your your Instagram, and like he's uh, he's talking about Godzilla minus one. He's talking about he's talking about like big important movies, and I was like. I kind of want to see if this guy will do a horror movie with me because we haven't done, I love horror. It's my favorite genre. Mm -hmm. And we haven't done a horror movie on the show in like a month and a half. And it was killing me. And I was like, is this, is this going to work? Is it? And I knew it was going to be cool because I think you just did a, my bloody Valentine review, right? Yeah. Yeah. All and I was like, Valentine's, I'm in, yeah. I'm in, this is going to work. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> By the way, what did you think of my bloody Valentine? That was your, was that your first time watching that too? It, it was my uh, second time. Like I had seen it a couple years prior. Um, but I really liked it. I don't think I appreciated that much until my second viewing. And you got to watch the uncut. So anyone who hasn't seen it, you have to make sure the Blu-ray is like the uncut one because that's where all like the good shit is. Yeah, oh, they yeah. Cut, I think like nine or ten minutes out of it. Um, and funny enough, that day that we recorded it, New Beverly Cinema actually was doing a, a midnight screening, and they do all thirty-five millimeter prints. And I was like. Man, I should go, even though I had just watched it. And yeah, I went to the screening and it's so fun to watch in a packed theater, man. Everybody's oh, yeah. laughing at all the right moments, gasping at the right moments. Um, but it was since it was a film print from probably the 80s, it did have all the good gore cut out. So it was a little disappointing uh -huh. by comparison, <laughs> yeah. but it was at the least safe, you get, it was the safe print. <laughs> yeah, but at least yeah. you get the energy of like the the audience and like everybody's like super yeah. into it, you know, and it's midnight, but yeah, and I really like that movie. I, I think it holds up and it deserves, I think I said on the podcast, it, I feel it kind of deserves to be in the pantheon of like the greats. I mean, I like it better than Friday the 13th. You know what yeah. I mean? But well, especially that original one. <laughs> that original Friday the 13th does not hold up. It's it's a hard watch. <laughs> uh, yeah. Ironically, I wound up watching My Bloody Valentine, the 2009 3D remake, <laughs> because I had never seen it. And I just wound up watching recently for the first time ever Black Christmas 2006. And I was like, oh, I really oh, yeah. want to watch like another early aughts slasher remake. And on Valentine's Day, while my wife was at work, because she's not going to fucking watch this movie with me. I was like, fuck it. I'm going to watch My Bloody Valentine yeah. 3D. And I had a blast with it. It was so fun. It's horrible, but it's great. Yeah, I. Uh, it's funny. My girlfriend and I actually tried to watch it like a... I don't know, a couple weeks ago, like somewhere around Valentine, but it kept, um, I don't know, the internet was being bad, so it kept like freezing up and we just kind of oh, gave yeah. up on it. But man, Black Christmas 2006. Sorry, I know we're talking other stuff right now, but no, I no, I that. need this. When I have horror yeah. people on the show, I need this. <laughs> yeah. I actually saw that before I saw the original film and I got to go back and watch it. Like I haven't seen it since it was in theaters, but man, Black Christmas, I was just talking to my friend, I think on the Bloody Valentine episode, like, Black Christmas, I watch it every year, and it's still, like, one of the greatest. Like, Bob Clark oh, yeah. was on another level, I and I can't even articulate it. Like, even as a filmmaker, it's hard for me to articulate, like, what he does exactly to just make it so perfect. And I'm, I'm sad that he didn't do more horror movies. Like, we got a Christmas story, you know, that's great. Yeah. But I would have loved to see him do another... I mean, like that, Baby know? Geniuses is kind of a horror movie. If you think <laughs> Wait, was that him? It was. <laughs> That's him too, it? yes. Later career Bob Clark left us with Baby Geniuses, and I think oh, Baby man. Geniuses too. Um, That's oh. one of those movies, the Bob Clark, the original Black Christmas, where just like the Superman, the movie, that tagline really does truly pay off because the tagline for Black Christmas is, if this movie doesn't make your heart skip a beat or something, oh, your skin, skin is on too something? tight. Yeah, I mean, and I always think about that because the tight. end of that is so unnerving with Billy, and and when that eye comes out, man, I, I yeah, like, you want to dive out of the window. You can't take it anymore. Yeah, the tension. I, I love it. Every year, New Beverly does a double feature of that and um, Silent Night, Deadly Night, and now oh, they sell yes. out super quick. So like, if you're not like ready to buy your ticket the moment they announce, it's a little tough to get in there, but. Yeah, I love seeing it with an audience too on the big screen because that oh, that yeah. moment the eye always gets everybody and Jesus, it's um, bad. But yeah, that yeah that ending, the phone just ringing like it's the perfect ending. The phone ringing, everybody goes away. The body's still in the window, like no one ever <laughs> yeah. found it. And the way the camera just pulls out, <laughs> yes. into the street, and there's no music. It just the credits rolling. Oh, is the phone rings? It's. And it's then you gotta sit brilliant. with yourself with that silence. It's like, yeah. even, and if you're leaving a movie theater, you gotta walk to your car with that. Right. You gotta walk yeah. with that. That's hard, you can't, man. You, you can't help but watch the credits too. Like I always oh, yeah. watch all the because of that. It's just yeah, you, like you said, you have to just sit in it. It forces you to in a way. <laughs> it does, dude. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a brilliant. hard watch. It's so good. All right, respect to Bob Clark. 
Uh, well, Dr. Giggles might not reach the heights of a Bob Clark Black Christmas, but we shall see. Before we get into our main review, let me quickly do a quick bit of housekeeping as we do on the show. As always, you can find us on Patreon, patreon.com slash the Matt Mark Movie Show. Link is in the show notes for as little as a dollar. You can help support this pod, help us keep the lights on, and get access to a ton of extra fun video content, a video podcast, all that good stuff. Do go check that out. Uh, We have a voicemail number. It's 707-948-6707. Leave us a message. We might play it on the show. We have a YouTube as well. Do go support us there. Like and subscribe. All that cringy YouTube crap. Okay. The spiel's out of the way. Let's get down to fucking cases. I have to ask, Rudy, since you are the Drinks in a Movie podcast guy, I would be a terrible fucking host if I did not ask this straight away. What drink would you pair with Dr. Giggles? (laughs) Oh, man. I, I should have thought of that. I'm like looking at my shelves right now. I, yeah, I don't know. It's got to be something like goofy. So in the spirit of you being on the show, I, I actually tried to, and I'm not, I'm not a bartender. I'm not a mixologist. I'm not even a guy that's good at, at like pairing things. I'm just like, I know what mm-hmm. I like to drink, but I'm like, all right, I got the drinks in a movie guy on the show. What am I going to drink with Dr. Giggles? The only doctor thing I could come up with was having a Dr. Pepper with Johnny Walker Black mixed in it. And let me tell you, it is not good. (laughs) (laughs) It was a giant miss. (laughs) You know, I guess if it was going to be a cocktail, maybe it'd be a penicillin, because that's a medicine, right? I've never made one. Oh, there you go. That's like a penicillin, I guess. But I never do cocktails. If I was, I would probably find a craft beer, because there's so many creative craft beers now with like really cool artistic labels. And a lot of them are riffs off like movies. So I'm sure there's got to be one that's like, the mad Dr. West Coast IPA or some shit like oh, something that like would that be has, to, it yep. has to exist or like heartbreaker I, or something with all the hearts yeah. in the movie. Right. Yeah. So my I, wife was I'd like, go to different stores and find my that. wife goes, just drink a painkiller. I was like, I can't drink a painkiller to this movie. I'll fall asleep. Oh, there's, there's one. Yeah. <laughs> <You're> kidding me. <laughs> right all now right, on so- that tip, I, I will say real quick, I am enjoying. Sorry. Little plug. Nelson pros. Nelson bros. Oh, there you go. Reserve bourbon. So that's what I'm sipping on right now. If anyone is curious. (laughs) There you go. That'll help Dr. Giggles go down a little easier. So Dr. Giggles made in 1996, directed by Manny Koto, uh, a guy who I had not heard of previously, but has made a lot of stuff that you are aware of. He's worked on 24 American horror story and randomly for my real video store weirdos. There was that kid's movie called star kid that had uh, Tim from Jurassic Park in it. Manny Cotto actually directed that movie. It was his follow-up to Dr. Giggles. So if you really want to dive into the Manny Cotto filmography, your next stop is Star Kid. <laughs> I didn't realize it was 96. Like I was looking through the IMDb, but I guess I oh, skipped it, that and thought I it was like it, 90 or something. Maybe it's 92. I may have misspoke. It might be. Actually, I'm wrong. It is 92. It's not 96. It's 92. Okay. Because yeah, there's just... a gap because Star Kid is 97. Um, yes, this is directed by Manny Cotto, starring Larry Drake. And I actually think this is a good entry point to our discussion. Because like I mentioned, so Larry Drake, before I even knew him as Robert G. Durant from Dark Man, I knew him because I was a Tales from the Crypt kid. I knew him as Santa Claus from all through the house. That's like, you know, that famous... Tales from the Crypt episode where the Santa, like the escape mental patient Santa. I haven't seen that, but that house. sounds really it's great with him. <laughs> awesome. He is fantastic in it. Funny enough, I guess now, now that I've seen Dr. Giggles, Larry Drake likes to play escaped mental patients who <laughs> then go to another part of town and just start amassing a body count. So all through the house was how I saw him. And then that's how I was introduced to him. And then it was Dark Man. So I was like, Do you, are, are yeah. you a Dark Man fan? I, I'm not going to say I'm a fan, but I remember seeing it when I was a kid and I actually just rewatched it maybe a year or two ago yeah. for the first time. And like, since I was a child, probably since it was out, you know, did it hold up for um, you? Parts of it, you know I mean? I, I just like, oh, my battery died on that light. I just like seeing Sam Raimi grow. Yeah. You know, I, you know what I mean? Like, and I think it was probably around the time uh his Marvel, the Dr. Strange movie was coming out. But uh-huh. I was like, oh, you know what? Let me go back and like watch Dark Man. Like, I love to go back to people's roots, you know. Obviously, Evil Dead's like the root, but Dark Man. Yeah, I liked it. And I did like this Larry Drake dude. Like, I never saw him in anything else. I understand like LA Law or something was like a show he was a regular. Yeah, I think on that something. was his big that was his big ticket for like, mainstream that was audiences. His, yeah. Right. Um, but other than that, I haven't seen him in anything else. And even on the poster art for this, like it's got the mask, right? 
So I didn't realize it was him until I started watching it. And I'm like, oh, it's that guy. This makes a lot of sense. <laughs> and yeah, no, but Dark Man, yeah, I mean, I still like it. There's just some crazy, you know, Liam Neeson freaking out on Francis McDormand at times. Oh, so like, good. It's just kind of weird. But I love the makeup. You know what I mean? I love like the yeah just the design of him like the the wraps you know like the one i yeah, see the 99 his, his yeah the hats, 99 like, minute latex masks and shit. yeah and just like he has this kind of noir like vibe almost you know and then yes. just your classic like sam raimi cross dissolves and weird lens shit you know right lots of quick snap <laughs> zooms lots yeah. of like really yeah. like coming across the room on those like yeah, big swings yeah, yeah. yeah so good Ted raimi of course you know oh yeah uh one of my favorite bits in that original dark man movie is when Darkman actually impersonates Robert G. Durant. So you have two Larry Drakes in one scene. And there's a great bit where they're both going through the revolving door and they look at each other and he's like, shoot him. No, shoot him. It it turns into like a Three Stooges (laughs) bit. Larry Drake is fucking awesome. I'm going to admit, I think now that I'm putting the pieces together and I have sort of these three big Larry Drake things, Tales from the Crypt, uh, Dr. Giggles, and Darkman, I can really kind of see who he is as an actor. And uh, it's kind of cool. Um, I'm going to say this. I think the guy's underrated. I think he's awesome. I, he's like a very cool horror presence. Um, he definitely did a lot of horror work in the 90s, especially for a mainstream TV actor before it became trendy to do that kind of thing. Um, mm. And this was another thing I was kind of dwelling on last night I, after I watched the movie. I should say I only watched it once. And I came away with this like idea like, okay, so right today, right? You know, you got your Halloweens, you got Michael Myers, you got Art the Clown with Terrifier. But like how rare was it in the 90s to have a horror movie that was all about your bad guy and the bad guy has no mask he has no disfigurement it's just a guy like the guy yeah. alone is what's scary like that's gotta that says a lot about the actor right yeah no definitely i'd agree with that yeah and i do feel too after watching this and thinking back to, to dark man same as you like kind of underrated like i'm surprised and he just has a good like a good look too like he looks yeah. menacing it's like I'm surprised there wasn't more and just maybe, you know, I don't see him quite being like a huge star, but definitely as like a character actor, like playing a lot of villains and stuff. I wonder if he came about in like this era or even the seventies or earlier or whatever, if it would have worked out differently for him, you know what I mean? But, Oh yeah. Yeah, for yeah, sure. And, and, and with this movie, it's like, cause it's a pretty goofy movie, but it's clear that, they set out to have humor that it was going for this. Like, I don't know that it quite succeeded in getting like the scary and the funny tone. That's a hard thing to do. Yeah. You know, cause it's, I, it's I, I, yeah. Cause I don't know about you, but when I was watching this movie, it didn't seem like, Oh, it's just like a bad movie. It seemed like, Oh, they're trying to be funny. Like it's in the script. Wait till you get the bill. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so he should have kept his hands to himself. Like, you know, they're, they're going for these jokes. Maybe they're trying to do like a nightmare, like Freddy Krueger kind of thing. I don't know, but um, I lost my train of thought. Sure. Where was I going? Where was I going with that? But he's menacing. I would have loved to see him play or yeah. If they played this movie completely straight, I think it could have worked out a little better. And maybe if it wasn't called Dr. Giggles, but they took it a little more seriously, you know, and yeah. he got to just play it straight and not do little puns and jokes. Um, I wonder if it would have, been more like highly revered you know if they would have pulled it off if they just stuck to that i don't know what are your thoughts on that yeah i well i'm it's funny i'm a little bit of the inverse of the coin i like my horror Mm. campy i like kind of all shades of horror but once i once it became clear that they were going for camp like and, Mm. and, and and like you were saying like you know they weren't setting out to make a bad movie i think they were kind of trying to do almost like a john waters thing like we want to mm. be silly and wink to the camera, but we also kind of like serial mom. We want to have like copious amounts of violence, but we want to be silly and funny and campy about it. And yeah. um, I really love that. And I think it helped though, because I was not expecting a straight ahead horror. I think the name, for some reason, the name Dr. Giggles, which by the way, is a very, very stretched connect. <laughs> <laughs> the giggling is very forced and it's thankfully it's not a big part of the character. Yeah, It's just a great sounding name on paper in the movie there's not much it's not like the linchpin thing that is revealed about a character kind of like joker or yeah. something where you realize like, it's strictly yeah. there for name service only lip service mm-hmm. only but i like the camp and once he like i kind of it was almost like when you watch arnold schwarzenegger and batman and robin i was like i want to see how many puns they're gonna get because at a certain point 
Larry Drake speaks exclusively in doctor and medical puns. It's all his character yeah. does. Yeah. And I was like, at a certain point, they're going to exhaust these because we've gone through 10 of them. It's not even the halfway point of the movie. And they fucking did it. They yeah. keep coming. <laughs> they Just when you think they've run out of them, he's got another one. Like, yeah. <laughs> where do you see the bill? One of my favorites was, um, she's like, I thought you were supposed to be dead. Didn't you kill yourself? And he's like, I'm not that good a doctor. There was just something like <laughs> really dumb about that. Uh, I loved the puns. I love that they went for that. Now, I do think that um, I'm not going to just give the movie a pass, but because I, I do think some of them are not as successful. I like them more when they tied into like physical gags, like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, like he should keep his hands to himself and he's got two severed hands yeah, yeah. with him right <laughs> yeah that's great because it kind of doubles down when you have sort of like the more there was one that didn't work for me at all it's when he's uh he's sneaking into the girl uh the guy's house and the little brother is there playing dr mario because it's a doctor movie and little brother's terminal. playing dr mario and he says terminal and <laughs> yeah, i was like mm, was that the best pun we could have for that right. like i started to grade them <laughs> on pun copy because you do that when that's all your character does you know you know, it's right. I, I I think ironically, that's the one that I actually kind of chuckled at. Oh, really? The, 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, just because the the way you interpret I, my interpretation is that like this kid is just so zombified by playing this game. It's just like, oh well, he's already toast. And <laughs> I think about like all these young people now on their phones and all that. And like I was a high school teacher for a second for two years, right? Like, oh wow. And um, <clears throat> it's kind of it was a little grim because like I see some of those students and it's a little sad but it's just like oh man you've got like no you're just so locked into this phone and can't even communicate with anybody it's kind of messed up um so i think because of that experience and seeing a lot a lot of that that's why that made me chuckle uh -huh. <laughs> you know the, the rest of them yeah so i know that got a little dark but the rest of them um yeah they were you know goofy i'd smirk a little bit but i i do think like man that movie if it played in a theater with an audience, it would kill for sure. Oh, like, yeah. I'm sure there's a big following for it and people are like ready to quote it. Like, I would love to see this if it ever did screen somewhere, which I'm sure sooner or later it will. Um, I would love to see it with an audience. I'm sure it'd be like way just way funnier when other people are there and there's like energy. You know what did I mean? Did you watch it on your own? Yeah, yeah, I just watched it by myself. Same, so, same. Uh, yeah, and I, I agree with you. I, I, I definitely miss the audience. Like, even if I had a buddy in the room or somebody, you know, yeah. just kind of kicking back a couple beers and just kind of enjoying it. L like to myself, I was laughing, but then there were stretches where I was like, <laughs> it was just dead yeah. quiet. And that's not a discredit to the movie. It was just like you need that energy yeah. to kind of keep egging the movie on almost. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to ask you, do you like a little camp in your horror? Or are you more like the kind of horror you like is a little more sort of takes itself more seriously? It depends. I mean, I like a little bit of everything. So it depends when you catch me. You know what I mean? Like, I'm definitely not against it. Um, trying to look at my my shelf here. Like, yeah, it just depends. I can't even think of any like campy movies specifically right now that I would be into, but. I don't know, like the Toxic Avenger is not a horror movie, but I like the Toxic Avenger. You know, oh, I, I like stuff Toxic. like that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like that was actually an episode I did like a few months ago. <laughs> um, but yeah, it depends on on the day, you know, the situation. That's all. But I can get down with it. Just with like Larry Drake, it would have been interesting to see. Um, I mean, I'm down with what we got and I'm definitely not against it, you know, but it's like if someone else got a hold of the script and was like, let's change the title and like play this dead serious. Sure. And still have that same actor. I would just be curious what would have come out of it, you know? Cause even the cinematography and everything was, um, I think good. Like it definitely looks of that time, but it's, it's good. Like I love that visually. They definitely played it straight. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so that juxtaposition is kind of interesting. And man, one thing we were talking about my bloody Valentine getting cut up, like, this movie definitely seems like the the powers that be took the knife to it really hard because so yes. many of those kills were like kind of cool, like cool and whatnot, but you never see the result of it. So as I'm watching it, me being like, I don't know, I like some gore and shit, you know what I mean? To go with oh, the yeah. laughs. Oh, like, yeah. There's I was expecting to see some like really fucked up like aftermaths of these kills almost to where I was getting more scared of that to myself of like my imagination was like, oh, what's the stomach pump lady going to look like afterwards? I was expecting like this shrunken down, sucked in like corpse sitting on the chair, you know? 
Oh, that never... been, yeah, that would have been yeah. a good gag. Yeah, to have her like deflated but, or something. Yeah, yeah, or even like the one that got the uh, the fucking like thermometer like through the bottom of her tongue or whatever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm glad we didn't see it, but like the aftermath could have been neat. So clearly, Manny Cotto and his direction knew what he was doing and like building up the audience's imagination with that stuff. Like, you know, what I mean, because what you imagine in your mind is always going to be scarier than what you see, but. I would have loved to see some gore too, you know, and oh yeah, didn't quite yeah. get that. So that that left me a little unfulfilled. Um, I definitely agree with you there for sure. Uh, even the some of the gory bits, they kind of the gags themselves, the like the physical effects look a little corny, uh, and almost I think to like an like almost like a, to a, a a purposeful extent, like just to avoid that MPAA knife. Like there's yeah. a scene where he so basically Doctor Giggles, this whole deal is that. Um, he wants to perform a heart operation, heart surgery on uh, the final girl in the movie uh, because it has uh, it has a connection to his childhood. His dad mm -hmm. was accused of mass murdering parent, uh, patients of his, which he did because he was trying to find a heart, a new heart for his ailing wife. So we have a bit where Dr. Giggles has a bucket of hearts. That's where he, and I think he even has a joke like have a heart and he's like throwing hearts, but they look almost intentionally fake mm -hmm. compared to right? Some of the other gore bits that we get. And I'm like, there was a part of me that thought that's definitely got to be on purpose so that they could go to the MPA and say, look, we'll make the hearts in the bucket look fake. Right. If you give us this other scene where we could really play the blood. Um, I definitely also want to call out, I think you're onto something. The cinema, the visuals in this, the cinematography in this, I actually think are kind of inspired. There are shots in this, like there's a great bit. I am a sucker for this bit where the camera is inside of a patient's mouth looking yeah. at Dr. Giggles. <laughs> yeah. It's right. like that. It's that shot from little shop of horrors where you're like looking at Steve Martin through the teeth. They did it for mm. Dr. Giggles. It totally works. There was another um, bit, uh, like a really nice bit, although it, it kind of clashed with the style, but when they first go to Dr. Giggles, childhood home and it's all run down um, the first mm. time the kids go in the house, it looks awesome. It looks like fucking Candyman or something. It's like, yeah, right. There are these streaks of sunlight coming in. It's like super moody. Yep. And for a hot yeah. second, I was like, is this movie going to turn on a dime and get like scary? <laughs> right. And it, it doesn't. Um, and by the way, we should also mention killer fucking cast in this. Dougie Doug from Cool Runnings is in it. Roseanne fans, Mark, uh, Becky's shitty boyfriend is in it and plays a shitty boyfriend in this movie. And the main girl, the final girl, is Holly Marie Combs, Piper from Charmed. Yeah, right. So it was like all these little nostalgic bits for me. I was like, oh my god, like <laughs> how how has this movie escaped like a like a cult renaissance? It feels like it should be like all over the place just with the cast alone. Yeah, man. Supposedly, uh, Jennifer Aniston auditioned for her role too. I don't know if that's really? true, but and she's like, "Fuck era, it, I'll do Leprechaun." Yeah, yeah, and that era, <laughs> it kind of makes sense. You gotta do what you gotta do, right? Like in a world where Renee Zellweger and uh, Matthew McConaughey were also in Texas Chainsaw sequels. Oh you know? yes, dude, uh, next I love generation. The see, yeah, I love to see actors like even Viggo Mortensen was in one of those. I think I love to see the actors that like made it, the ones that got lucky. Oh like, yeah, still have good <laughs> right, but, right. Um, <laughs> on the tip of like really great shots too. There's one moment like. You remember that, that one fool is like trying to open up the condom and he drops it in the toilet. <laughs> yeah. And for some reason, instead of grabbing it, he like uses the toothbrush to do it, which seems like way worse to me. Like I was just, just <laughs> grab it with your hands and wash your hands. I like, don't put the toothbrush. In. It was really bizarre, like a really <laughs> yeah. bizarre choice that was like more gross than just going for it. Cause at least you can wash your hands. You know what I mean? Like the toothbrush, you got to get rid of that. And it thing. wasn't even like someone else's toothbrush. It was his own toothbrush <laughs> and he put it back. Like he was presumably going to use it again. And to double down on the grossness of that scene, he's trying to get his girlfriend to get freaky with him. And he has lingerie that he stole from his mom. So he wants the girl to dress in the mom's lingerie. Yeah, I didn't even catch that. So I, I may have like, yeah. been poor. She's myself. like, where'd you get this? <laughs> He's like, I got it from my mom's bedroom. And I was like, that is gross. <laughs> wow, I missed that line. Good God. Okay. <laughs> but see, and then you just you just juxtapose that though with this next shot that I loved when he's like going to the bed and the camera is under the blankets, you know what I mean? Oh, it's like yes. in the sheets yes. and reve <laughs> reveals the doctor <laughs> laying there. And then he said, you have protection or whatever the hell he says. 
yeah, that, that a was a line. great shot yeah and you, yeah. you know what's gonna happen but it was just such a good <laughs> shot like the camera just in the sheets to reveal him because <laughs> there's a 50 50 right it's either gonna be the dead girlfriend yeah or it's, or it's gonna be dr <laughs> right. giggles and and there's larry drake like laying seductively on his side <laughs> yeah. it was so good man yeah larry drake is so fucking good in this movie like I think it's easy for someone like him, you know, all right, you're going to, you're the, you're the, you're the slasher in the movie. The movie's named after you. You we're going for camp. You can play it up. Like he doesn't make these big decisions like Robert England, Freddy Krueger. He plays it for the most part, kind of straight, except for the giggling. I think where yeah. he lets it kind of loose, but like all, even the puns, all that shit is said as serious as day. And it's just his it's delivery true. that makes it, seem funny and weird because he's so yeah. off-putting yeah no he's that's true that's awesome that's really well it. said yeah uh, um no go ahead sorry so now that you've seen dr giggles right where does dr giggles line up on your slasher list or does he crack does he crack any any kind of meaningful top five anything for you <laughs> or is he kind of just an oddity on the side it's an oddity on the side still like i i definitely when I left the movie, I was like, okay. I mean, I'm glad I saw it. I was like, you know what? It's about time. At first, I was a little, when you sent that this was the movie, I was just like, oh, man, I was hoping we were going to do something. <laughs> like, I listened to your guys' Assault on Precinct 13 episode. Oh, thank uh, you. Which yeah. I really loved. And I actually just recorded it on it, and I'm going to try to put it out tomorrow uh, with my friends over the weekend. Love that movie. And I was like, man, I hope I get something like that. Like, hit me with some John Carpenter. Like, something I know, you know? Um, <laughs> and... I was like, oh, Dr. Giggles, okay. But I was again. <laughs> You're like, that's what kind of fucking show this is. All no, right. <laughs> no. But no, I, I was like, you know what? It's it's something I needed to see because of that. Again, growing up and like seeing the cover art. And yeah. I try to work my way through some of those films when I can, you know. So um, all that to say, um, I think talking about it out loud is making me appreciate certain aspects of it a little bit more. I'll need to watch it again. But as of now, it's not even on any list. I'm like, it's just one that I watched. I'm like, that's, that's that, you know, like it's, it's in the, it's in the list of, you know, I've been going to Amazon prime a lot and like watching like sorority house massacre, sorority house oh, massacre yeah. two, um, final exam and like all these ran like random movies like that slumber party massacre, slumber party massacre two, like just going down the list. Uh, so I put it in that pantheon where they're like kind of fun and goofy and I can laugh at it. Um, but you know, in a few days, I'm not going to remember it at all. Yeah. Probably. Oh, totally. Yeah, I'm going to forget all of it. These are what I call like my Tubi picks. I'm like, oh, well, yeah. I'll watch a Tubi. You know, like, yeah. Like right. I, I was looking at my watch list last night on Tubi because I was like, all right, Tubi, what what else we got? We go cooking in the pipeline, and I saw like I got Slaughter High, <laughs> Cutting Class. I got a couple full moon Cutting movies. Class. I was like, this is what Tubi is for. This is exactly right, yeah. like. Amazon Prime oh. Video is like it's up there at the big boys Netflix. <laughs> yeah. Tubi is where you slum it. You come down <laughs> to find yeah. your Dr. Giggles is in Slaughter Highs yeah. in the world. <laughs> no, that's true. Which have you ever seen Happy Birthday to Me? No, I've never seen it, but I've I just saw somebody I followed just posted about it. And I was like, yeah. oh, this is going on my list. <laughs> I've seen that one twice and um it's all right. I mean, I, I gotta watch it again, but the ending, not the like when all the corpses are in the waiting room, which I actually kind of like, like the waiting room. <laughs> yeah, that was, was a like, good. Oh, gag. it's all the people just killed in the movie. Um, it's just funny that the makeup is so overdone. It's like um, the the skin makeup in Dawn of the Dead, like George Romero's Dawn of the oh, Dead, yeah. how they kind of screwed. Like Tom Savini admit admittedly says that, like, yeah, we kind of screwed up because the film interpreted the colors like way too extreme and like green and blue, and it looked like that, like so overdone. But that kind of reminded me of um, Happy Birthday to Me. There's like the big moment is like all the victims at a table. I know you guys cover Thanksgiving. I listened to that episode too. Great movie. And um, he kind of took that same idea with like all the bodies at the table. You oh, know, shit. And, uh, spoiler alert. Sorry, guys. But, <laughs> but no, actually, yeah, now you made me want to watch this even bit. more because I have been obsessed with Thanksgiving. Um, all right. Yeah, I'm no, definitely yeah, going to watch that's... Happy Birthday to Me now. It's it's the one with like the poster where it's the shish kebab like in that guy's mouth. Yes, like, that's the yes. Movie, like the, the yeah that that movie. It's fine. But. I'm literally <laughs> writing down watch Happy Birthday to me. Uh, <laughs> thank you for that. 
Also, thank you for coming on and doing Dr. Giggles. You were like, man, Salt Pre-C-13, what are we going to talk about? Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Yeah. Giggles. There no, was a part of me, out. though, funny enough, I almost asked because I was like, you know, it was just one of those, again, like a pick for me. I was like, I haven't watched They Live in a long time, and I love They Live. And I almost said we should watch They Live, but I'm glad we didn't because it would have just Dang. been a love fest. I'm glad we got to dig deep on this weird ass fucking movie. By the way, you did touch on this just now. There is a bit where it's a great bit, like you said, where Dr. Giggles' victims are all dead in a waiting room, which is amazing. And yeah. it led me to think, I was like, how big is this fucking house? Like, you go into the house, right. you go underneath yeah. the house. Presumably, there's like a basement area where he could conduct his his surgical experiments, right? But then you go through that wall, and there's the whole, like, hospital area. <laughs> Yeah, like so multiple is that all rooms underground? in a painted hallway. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't understand the geography at all. <laughs> it's like, like he, I was like, he's got to be like in the sewers across the street now. Yeah, because the hospital's huge. Which and all right, hold on, a, cu- a couple, a couple things. Yeah, and even yeah, his main like lab when he is when he has her strapped down. It's all it's so big. It's like Frankenstein's laboratory. Big. Like <laughs> I don't even remember what's all there, but it's a lot of stuff. You know. And, um, but going back real quick to like the shooting style of this, man, the fun house stuff, there were some cool shots in that. I don't, I don't yes. remember exactly. Cause I didn't take notes. Um, like I mentioned, was like first sequence. time watching, I didn't take notes, but yeah, there was like some good, like some shots in there where I'm like, all right, that's actually pretty badass. Like again, the, this director knows what's up. He's making this goofy movie, but he also knows when to make some like pretty cool, creative and effective choices like not just cool for the sake of being cool but um like effective to the narrative you know oh um, yeah like almost elevates cool. the material a little bit right? yeah when that when that kind of stuff happens like when he has all the um like the the multiples in the images of the funhouse yeah. mirrors and he doesn't visually introduce it at all it just happens, it just happens and you yeah. the viewer have to be like oh shit oh okay got it and then it's like oh it's not just gonna be for this one character we're gonna do this whole fucking scene this way yeah it's really cool you're you're absolutely yeah. right it's it's kind of um it's it's kind of aspiring past this movie a little bit <laughs> like a little above the movie's pay grade but yeah we are we are the richer for it that it's here in the movie yeah for sure like that's the kind of stuff where i i think of for me it's like oh that's like the real shots you know what i mean like that he yes. put that on the director's reel to get the next better gig but seeing certain things like that um I mean, it's cool, you know, because he's a writer. Is he a director or a writer for like American Horror Story? And so, I think, I think he just writes for American, or he did just write. He passed away. He did just write for American Horror Story. Oh, he passed away. Okay. Um. Yeah. No. Like I. Sometimes I just I think about those moments and how I don't know. It, it's too bad he didn't get. And I wonder who knows what the story is like. But it would have been interesting if he got a shot at making another. And I know I'm going back to like a serious horror movie. Yes. You know what I mean? Like after this came out, like, but who knows how those things go in the industry and all that. And, you know, a lot of it's luck. But, you know, again, much like Larry Drake, it would have been interesting to see what this director would have done given like very serious material, even if it was a sequel to another, like a pre-existing oh, franchise. Yeah. Give, him you know a, I mean? like, give him an urban legend two or a final destination four or something. Yeah. A Friday the 13th, you know, like, oh, like, yeah, yeah. Any, like anything, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. like that, like that. And we like, and we've talked about it on the show before. I like the Friday the 13th remake, the one they did in 2009, but I that- could do too. It's yeah. really fun, but that's a movie again. Like it doesn't have such a such a huge, uh, clear visual stamp. Like you could kind of slot any director into that and make it work. Uh, and I think that 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 could have been again a nice little showpiece. Like, all right, let's see what Manny Cotto can do with something like this. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, even yeah, kind of to that tip, even a remake of of something. Yeah, hell yeah. Because sometimes, like, you know, let's I, get meta and have him remake his own movie. Just yeah. make Doctor Giggles make yeah. the two thousand nine version. <laughs> <laughs> on, the, on that, on that note, I will say on the record, like, it is cool when a a good horror remake comes out. Like Friday the Thirteenth remake, I actually really like. I think it yeah, hits same. all the same points. I think it's incredible that Daniel Pearl, uh, the cinema. Oh wait, no, that's so Daniel Pearl shot that. But also the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake, like the one from 03, that was also oh, yeah. Jessica the Biel. same, like my, Michael Bay company that did Friday the 13th. Um, I think that's one of the good remakes, too. Arlie yeah, Ermey steals the show. But I love that, you know, Daniel Pearl, 
uh, also shot that movie, who was the cinematographer on the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like, and I'm, I want to get him on the show so bad. Oh, like, holy shit! Really? Yeah, like that. Yeah, that's dude. Great. You like, just, the, the I just had to movie, stop yeah. there for a second. <laughs> yeah, the same person who shot the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, mind you, he was like 23 when they made that movie. Like, they were all young, young men. Wow. Um, like the fact that he went back, like they got him to shoot the remake in 2003, is incredible. And yeah, he also did the Friday the 13th. And there's one shot we, my friend Chris and I did both of these episodes on my podcast just this past October. And there's this great shot in the Texas Chainsaw remake when, you know, after that one chick in the van, the one from uh, the Evil Dead remake, like blows her head off. Oh, yeah. The uh, camera like starts on the reaction of everyone in the front of the van and it pulls back and like through the mouth, kind of similar to the shot we were talking about here, like through the mouth and out the car into like this wide landscape shot as they run out of the van. The, he does like the similar moment with the party kids and the Friday the 13th remake, but it's like the opposite where they're having fun and they're like loading up the beers and shit. But <laughs> anyway, I digress. Sorry. A whole different movie, but uh, no, that was yeah. awesome. Uh, and a little bit of trivia for this episode. I had no yeah. <laughs> idea. That's fucking great. Yeah. And uh, great that they also didn't just go the route of like, well, let's try to make it look like the original that they're like, Nope, let's do something completely different. Got to appreciate that. Yeah, yeah man. Now. Big. T- I mean, and as as much fun as we had with the new new Texas Chainsaw, the one that came out on Netflix like a year or two ago, did you have um, fun with it? We did. It was terrible. We all acknowledged it. It was terrible. Okay, okay. But I think we were all like so. I think we were almost like all like affected by how bad it was. Like in a good way, we were just like, "This is so dumb," that we were kind of loving it. <laughs> that was the first time. Like I almost recorded a solo episode right <laughs> after I watched it because I thought it was so terrible and so many things pissed me off about it. Like I was almost going to record that night or the next day with a friend like, yo, we need to do this now. <laughs> Lay it down. And now. I never, yeah. And, and do I, you and ever I never get that. It, do you, so do you have you ever sat down and committed to been like, fuck it. It's just me for this. It's a solo bit. Let's go. Have you ever sat down and done a solo pod? Yeah, I've done it a few times. The last one I did was on the, uh, the movie Radical with uh, Eugenio Derbez, which oh, wow. I-, I think should have been nominated for this year's like best international picture or whatever. It wasn't, which is kind of a shame. Um, what else? I did it on Flame and Hot. There, there was a couple that I did, not because they were like really bad or even right. Like, you just wanted to lay your lay your thoughts down. Yeah, and because no, you know, sometimes it's tough to get friends. To, like, hey, I need you to go watch this movie in the theater right now. Tell me people about it. People don't have Mark. time. It's yeah. hard to get Mark on board. <laughs> no, I, w- I won't shame Mark too hard. <laughs> no, dude, I give you massive yeah. props, and uh, and a friend of the show, Tommy Nuggets, also does that too. His show yeah. is just him, and mm. I have oftentimes thought of that. I'm like, fuck, I'm gonna lay this down. I'm just gonna fucking do a solo thing real quick, and then I I start to do it, and I'm like, I got, I got. It's like I'm talking to the wall. I don't know what I'm doing. So I it's give tough, anybody man. massive credit if you could if you could pull it off. Yeah, it's tough. I don't know that my episodes on that are any good. <laughs> I'll have to go and listen back to them, but. It's real. It's in the moment. I pour myself sure, a yeah. jam and I just go. And I, I'm also not against like revisiting movies if I feel I need to, you know, later with people. So that's actually an interesting yeah. concept too. like to have come back on your podcast to just sort of revisit something that you've yeah. already covered. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That I could see being like a good solo. Like, all right, you've got the you've got the sort of traditional take on it. Now, here's this kind of weird like bonus with just right. one person kind of that that's cool yeah yeah what i don't know who knows one day maybe I, mark will force me to have to do this show on my own at some point but uh for now i'm just gonna keep dragging him out so that i can do this yeah. show <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh as we do on our horror episodes i have to ask favorite kill of the movie what was your favorite kill in dr giggles dang favorite kill i should have thought to make note of this um, I think I might go for the, the first thing that comes to mind is a stomach pump because that like yeah, made that me really bad. uncomfortable and I was yeah. anticipating what the aftermath was going to be. Um, and I kind of figured it was going to be so like the moment it was really bizarre when she's like, well, first off, it's the, fa- sorry, but it's the father like sleeping with his late. And I thought that was weird at first because they established the mom was gone yeah. and even though she's and gone, it seems like she know. just died too it's not it's not like an old death yeah. like she died when she was eight it seems like a few years old 
Yeah, and I think it's the fact too that like this actress doesn't look any older than his daughter, so yes. that kind of threw me off. And I mean, I know that was pretty typical of movies of this time. <laughs> um, but so that, and then she says something about like, oh, well, she's dead. Get over it. I don't remember what, but something along oh, those yeah, lines. Yeah, right? She yeah, says right. something to him because he's like all upset. And so she gets the ice cream. And I remember she pulls it out, just this melted tub of like gross looking, like vanilla ice cream never looked so disgusting. It <laughs> yeah, did yeah. In that little shot. <laughs> that was bizarre. Sorry, I just had the like. And it's all of it too. Down. She dumps the whole thing in. But that's actually kind of funny because that's how they track the time because it cuts. And the next time you cut to the insert of the bowl, it's it's just all the like right. milky stuff at the bottom. <laughs> so you can tell she's taken it out. She's at least been there five, <laughs> 10 minutes. Oh, that's so bad. But yeah, I, I think that kill, just the idea of this, and they show the little whirring, you know, machine, yeah. oh, and he God, like yeah. just crams it down her throat. And the, yeah, that, that moment. Yeah, I'm not familiar oh, with the that. stomach pumping uh, machinery, but I, I was like, lie. I was wondering about that little like thing that came out. I was like, was that like a Dr. Giggles addition? Like he added that on, or is that actually what that thing does? Yeah, I would hope it's an addition for the movie. Yeah, same, <laughs> him, same. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's horrible, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm just used to like uh I just remember that scene in Almost Famous when they have to pump the girl's stomach at the party because she's had too much. Oh yeah, yeah. And they bring that yeah. hose in. And I don't remember that little doodad yeah. coming out. So <laughs> yeah. I mean it was the seventies, so you could argue maybe yeah, the, te- the newer the models have there, that. Yeah, 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 exactly. For me, favorite kill, I'm gonna tell you, just because I was just it was so fucking dumb, but it was awesome was when he wraps the uh, blood pressure cuff around the guy's neck and squeezes it to suffocate him. And I think he has a line. I don't know what his blood pressure line is, but the guy, <laughs> the guy's face, like the physical makeup on the guy's face is like, he's white and his face is like bloated and puffy. Like he's about to yeah. pop. It looks so good. And I wish I could remember what Giggle says in the scene because it is perfection. Wait, that, I'm going to dig actor, through this. Like her... <laughs> Wait, I'm digging through this IMDb. Her, her... Uh, I don't know. It might have been something like, do you feel any discomfort? There was something like, <laughs> maybe that this won't hurt a bit. It was something like that. It was just perfect. Yeah, just I can't remember the, the line either, but yeah, or you should relax or something stupid. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, or it's like, lucky for you, I make house calls. Right. It was like something like that. Oh, was that when he shoves that thing up that chick's nose? That was a rough one. That too. was great, that too. Was a yeah. Rough one. Did you yeah. get a, I got like total recall vibes off that. You know the thing when they put the yeah. thing up Arnold's nose and he's like, ah, yeah. ah. That's dude, right. Dude, that, yeah. that like head dummy on the lady looks so good for that thing <laughs> to go right up the nose. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, like, shit. I feel like in another movie, right? Like in a slash, especially like a slasher, you're not seeing gags like that. Like, hey, we'll have, we'll have a special effect animatronic head to double for the woman so we get the shot or we'll do a big effect shot that comes through a patient's mouth so we can get the pov through that to see dr giggles like there's something kind of like quirky and cool about that visual stamp like there's something a little extra we touched on it earlier but you're not seeing that kind of stuff in these especially in this era of slashers it's just so different you know yeah no one's into the practical effects enough man and like to me, it always gets a pass, even if it's not perfect, which it'll never be because you can, your mind can tell that that is something that's like physically there in the real world in front of the camera versus CGI, you know, which in other words, like in a more, I guess, the meaning way is like when it turns into a cartoon, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just not the same. And that's why I appreciate some of the filmmakers, you know, like Eli Roth still goes for like the practical. And so, you know, you're talking about like replacing the head, like when he hammers that fool's head in at the dinner table on Thanksgiving and you see where it like cuts to the, the fake one <laughs> yeah. and you're seeing it happen. So and he, yeah. And even the walking dead for most of its run, I don't know if you ever watched that show, but like Greg Nicotero can be effects. Like they leaned a lot into the practical effects that were very reminiscent of the George Romero films and even, Oh yeah. You know, all, all that stuff. And it makes such and then now as it's gone on, it's become more CGI, but yeah, there's something to it. Like I, I, for me personally, it'll always get a pass. You know what I mean? Like you, seeing the fake, I don't care how fake it looks. The Terminator yeah. people talk about when he's like removing his eye and you see the red light for the, I don't care that it looks fake. It's it looks there. Awesome. You know what I mean, yeah. like yes. they built that and it's cool. And I'll take that over 
a cartoon, you know? A hundred percent. I'm actually worried about, it's funny you brought that up because they're re-releasing Terminator for the 40th anniversary this year in theaters. Oh, really? And I'm oh, so yeah. scared that he like is going to George Lucas that shit. So you get the like, slightly cg helped especially like when the yeah when the uh full you know the uh terminator robot is crawling after her out of the fire i was yeah. like that shit better not look dnr'd well, in or the like plastic yeah i i would like to think that james cameron knows better and just stay focused on avatar dude like get your avatar <laughs> movies out and leave it alone just you know <laughs> yeah exactly like he's just throw, already just yeah. throw some nice like sound remastering on that get it ready for dolby but leave the visuals alone yeah yeah i'll, I'll take all of it man it just yeah <laughs> even that like when it's crawling after her before it gets crushed by that compressor thing it's like that's a real thing that people are manipulating yes. and you can tell like you see the texture and and it and looks so that, awesome you know? like yeah, yeah. and that's why it. it's still that's why it still holds up you know 100 percent, 100 percent. what was your favorite uh, kill again sorry my favorite kill was the the, the blood pressure cuff. that's right the blood oh i was gonna say with that actor i had to keep looking him up because i swore that i recognized them and i'm like oh the 80s blob remake again one of the other greatest oh. remakes of all time but it wasn't him i thought he was maybe the priest guy that like takes the blob at the end has a little sample of it. But it oh wasn't him. I, no! I, didn't recognize I know exactly who you're credits. talking about, though. No, yeah. I don't think it is that guy. It wasn't. Yeah, but yeah, I looked that... it up twice. I was like, it's got to be him, and it wasn't. But that is a good call, though. Yeah, uh, the actor we're talking about, his name is John Vickery, and he. Uh, I just looked him up on IMDb. I don't know that shit offhand. <laughs> just <laughs> yeah. so everybody knows, I don't want to pretend like I knew who this was. Um. But sci-fi people will know him apparently from Babylon Five, Star Trek: Deep Space mm. Nine. Um, okay, he did some. Yeah, he did. He did that kind of stuff. I love the guy that you're talking about. I want to say it's the same guy from. Um, it's not the guy from. Uh, it's not the guy from Halloween Two. But there's a there's a guy that he looks exactly like. <laughs> and I can't. It escapes me now. All right, sorry everybody. Yeah. Um. Anyway, go watch the Blob remake because it's fucking awesome. <laughs> that, that's when I got to do. Maybe we can do like another um, collaboration episode. I haven't talked about the Blob. Yet. Oh, my think, God. Uh, the Blob a good one. 1988 is one of my all time favorites. I, I love it. Uh, I will talk so about good. that movie anytime. If you want to do a thing, please let me know. I will totally talk about the Blob. Yeah, yeah we'll get that. Absolutely I actually it. last a year or two ago, Secret Movie Club. Sorry, I, I go to a lot of like screenings out here and um they did an October or two ago, a double feature of like the original, you know, Steve McQueen blob and the remake. And I took my oh, dad wow. to see it because he's a fan of the the original one and all that. And so that was really fun. But it was like a 16 millimeter print, but it got messed up partway through. Like something went wrong where the other everything besides the first two reels, like didn't have sound or something. Oh. So they had the switch to like a DCP. So it was kind of funny because it's like, you're watching an old 16 millimeter, 16 millimeter print. It's got the like pink haze on it. And then they're <laughs> like, all right, sorry, we got to stop and switch the DCP. So there's like a five minute intermission. And then now you're basically watching like a Blu-ray of it. <laughs> right. You're like, damn, this so looks great. Yeah. <laughs> no, I can see but, everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what was your dad's reaction after coming off of the original blob to going into 1988, was he like, what in the craziness uh, he, is this? He liked them both. I mean, I think he kind of can dig it with me where he can have fun with those special effects. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Like, like, Oh, that's crazy. That you know, is well, a, like, and that is a special yeah. effect showcase that movie for sure. Yeah. And just the people involved too. Like it always trips me out that Frank Darabont wrote it, you know, yeah. or did he direct yeah. it too? Or just he wrote it. And no, it's directed by Chuck Russell, the guy okay. who did the mask and dream warriors. And, uh, Oh shit. Yeah, dude. So a fucking awesome pedigree on that movie. Yeah. <laughs> and you have the yeah. great Kevin Dillon with one of my all time favorite movie mullets. Fantastic <laughs> mullet in that movie. And we got Bill Mosley in there. And, Hell yeah. yeah, man. Shawnee Smith got uh, Amanda yeah. from the Saw series. Yeah, yeah. We're big fans of hers on this show as well. <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? So as we're kind of coming to the tail end of this Dr. Giggles conversation, I was going to ask, would you recommend to our listeners to watch Dr. Giggles? Matt, I was thinking about that when you asked me my where it falls on my list. Cause someone responded to my Instagram when I was watching it 
She's like, oh, like, how is it? And I'm like, oh, it's fine so far. I'm like, part way <laughs> through it. And then she said, she's all right. When you're done, let me know if it's worth watching. And I still haven't responded. <laughs> so I got to do that. <laughs> so but what yeah, are you going to tell her? <laughs> yeah, I, I was leaning towards towards no. Um, but I think, again, like talking about it out loud and having someone to share it with um, makes me want to switch it to yes. You know what I mean? Because I think uh-huh. I think it is worth checking out like it's it's it has its funny moments you know what i mean it has it's like genuinely kind of scary moments where it lets your imagination run um i think for the most part it's actually like pretty well made you know what i mean like um so yeah i think i would recommend it it'd be a low recommend i think like the to be free you don't yeah. have to pay it's a to be it's a to be for sure yeah. um but yeah, all that to say, I'll say, yeah, I'll recommend it to specific people that ask me. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I I also think I would give it a soft to be recommend, but I actually think I would preface it with I it's one of these movies and this may sound negative in the moment, but I, it pays off dividends later. It's one of those movies that the conversation you have about it is going to be worth you having seen the movie because you will then be like, Oh man, it'd be like two weeks later. You will have seen 80 other movies by that point. You'll be like at a CVS getting something to drink. And you'll be like, do you remember that crazy ass part where he shoved that thing in that lady's nose? You'd be like, yeah, yeah, that was crazy. It's one of those. (laughs) It's just going to stick with you in just the right ways. That's why I think I would give it a soft recommend and it's on Tubi. You can watch it for free. And this is how much Tubi doesn't give a fuck because Tubi, we love to rag on Tubi on the show. You know Tubi loves to get that ad money. This is how slept on Dr. Giggles is. My Tubi never broke for ads, ever. Oh, mine did. <laughs> it a, did? a couple times, yeah. Dude, my Tubi was like, he took the night off and I got <laughs> no ads. <laughs> I was yeah. like, what is going on here? Yeah. <laughs> Damn, that's great. Yeah, that's I, fucking rare. Because I watched the My Bloody Valentine 3D remake on Tubi. And it's still on yeah. there now. And that had an ad break, I think, because it was fucking Valentine's Day. It had ad break like every 10 minutes. I was like, are we kidding Makes again? Sense. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like almost like you're watching a TV movie. Kind <laughs> I'm going to include that in my recommendation, by the way. Dr. Giggles, no ad breaks on Tubi. <laughs> <laughs> you know, doing this, like talking about it has got me thinking that I kind of I might revisit this like for my podcast, um, but maybe try to do like get a few friends and do like a live commentary on it. Like one of my friends yes. and I did that with silent night, deadly night too, but it didn't quite work out. Cause I didn't have the, it's like, I need to have a mic on the TV and then one on us. And then yeah. a lot of editing or it needs to be like all the way through the movie and maybe do YouTube. I don't know. I got to figure that out, but this would be a fun one. Like, again, we talked about it being kind of situational. If you watch it with people, I think the experience would be a bit different. So that's something I'm kind of thinking of for the future is like maybe yeah. a live, especially commentary. your pod, right? You've got the great drinks angle. Oh, you dude, could make some we'll fun so drinks, Dr. Giggles drinks, have everybody there drinking, watching the movie. Dude, I bet by the end of that episode, it's going to be like one of your favorite movies. You're going to love it. Yeah. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> I didn't even think that far into it. That's true. But that makes a lot of sense. Every goofy little pun he says. Yeah, you there you go. And people listening to this show, a follow Rudy, follow Drinks in a Movie podcast, but message Rudy and tell him about some good Doctor Giggles drinks. I think our audience could come up with some good ones. I think. Uh, oh man, this is brilliant! Yeah, this is all—it's all coming together. Everybody. It's all coming together, man. It's all <laughs> coming together. Uh, so there you go. That's our review and soft to be recommend of Doctor Giggles. I want to thank my guest Rudy Ruiz from the Drinks in a Movie podcast, Rudy. Uh, please tell the people where they can find you. And if there's any uh, episodes of your pod that you want to plug. Yeah. Uh, on Instagram drinks underscore and underscore a movie. So underscore between all the words. Uh, so that's on Instagram also on YouTube. Um, again, I don't post on there consistently. That's really more for when I get like special guests, whether it be like brand ambassadors for spirits companies or filmmakers, you know, directors, cinematographers, uh, people like that. And um, right now I just started up season. I'm calling it season six of the podcast. So we're maybe two or three episodes in. We just did um, my bloody Valentine. We released that on Valentine American fiction. We did. um, I forgot the other one, (laughs) but I just recorded two this past weekend. Assault on precinct 13 and predator. 
And oh, I've also got a solid <laughs> movies. Come on. Yeah. And I've also got a horror slasher double feature movie with my friend Carissa. She usually comes on and does horror movies with me. We did um, Maniac. Oh. Uh, and it's remake starring Elijah Wood. So Oh, that's, well, that's many, a good yeah, double right there. Yeah, that's something we started doing about a year ago around October. We're like, let's do double feature episodes where we do like a horror movie and the remake. Brilliant. Hence, uh, Friday the 13th and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, so those are the ones that are uh, coming down pretty soon. So. Yeah, check it out. I'd appreciate if you uh, yeah, just gave it a listen, and hopefully you dig it. Hell yeah, definitely go check out Drinks and a Movie Podcast. I'm going to listen to that X Pearl uh, episode for sure. Oh, hell yeah, hell yeah. Thank you once again, Rudy, for joining me. We'll be back next week. I think Mark is back in the States. Don't quote me. I don't know. Either way, whether Mark's here or not, we'll have a pod next week. Do tune in. Check out our Instagram for updates. That's it for us. We're out of here. Peace.